You think we've ridden the struggle bus before? Y'all hang around this video for a little while. We definitely take a ride on the struggle bus. All right, it's been a while since we worked on the Subaru. Project has taken way longer than any of us ever expected. So what we're gonna do today is we've had one more setback with the carburetor. I don't know where we got it, but I'm pretty sure we got another little slug of rust. That is the problem when you're dealing with a project like this is trying to get all the rust out of the fuel system. I believe this should be the last go round with this. Fingers crossed, let's get in here and I'll show you about this carburetor and what we gotta do to take it off. I didn't do a real good job last time of showing you a little more detail. This time, we'll get into it. All right, so as you can see, we've got the air breather. You've got three wing nuts on top. You've got a support brace right there. You've got a support brace right there over here on the left side. Well, right side, as a mechanic would look at it. And you've got various and sundry hoses on this side and here, and you gently will get all those loose. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in here and take the breather off. As you can see, we had some small lines. Get one there. Let's see, there's one here, one small one here that go up under the breather. Wherever they will come disconnected from the easiest, that's the one you want to try to do because you're dealing with 30, 40 year old plastics and you just want to try to get it apart as gently as you can. Now, uh, let's look down in here. Uh, we remember from last time when we take this carburetor off, they run water underneath this carburetor base, probably to cool down the uh, fuel charge just a little bit. And uh, well, that means that we have to have a drain pan and uh, let some water out so that we don't put water into the intake of this engine. So let me do that. Uh, you have on the passenger side of the car, on the bottom of the radiator, there's a drain cock. I have a clean belt pan down there. I'm gonna catch the coolant. And uh, when we get that done, we'll come back and uh, start taking the carburetor off. All right, coolant has slowed to a very slow drip. Um, one of the things you need to keep in mind is remove your radiator cap. That helps your coolant drain out faster. But the drain is right down there. It's really, there it is. You can just barely see the little white knob right there. So once you have your coolant drained, it's a good idea to go ahead and reach your arm down in there. And go ahead and tighten it back up because once all the coolant is drained you don't need to leave it open because if you forget it and you start trying to put coolant back in it in a little while well all your coolant goes out on the ground so go ahead as soon as it's done draining and tighten your drain all right so now what do we need to do first thing we got to do is start getting all these hoses off hose here 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 here, here, uh, and it's not too concerning to go to try to remember where all this stuff goes because this stuff is uh, pre-molded, pre-bent, been on here for a bunch of years, and it kind of falls back into place once you sit the carburetor back on there. But if you're not sure, you can tag everything. I know where everything goes, so I'm probably not going to. Uh, don't forget you've got these two little vacuum hoses down here. But as you can see, when you pull them off, turn them out of your way, pull them off and give them a little spin. And when you turn them back the way they go, they fall right back in place. And all you gotta do is plug them up. So let me grab a wrench so I can get in here and start getting those little bitty nuts undone. All right, so we had to go to the parts store. Um, I had to pick up a pickup magnet uh, because when you take the nuts off of this carburetor you stand a chance of dropping them even with the pickup magnet you still could drop them so my other magnet is at the shop not here at home so I just went and picked up another one now I'll have two so anyway 
I have my 10 millimeter wrench and uh, we're fixing to get in here and uh, start taking this carburetor off. All right, so as I said, we've got the nuts right, right there and there's four of them, one there and one over here and one over here. And we've got to take all these hoses off. Uh, I will uh, I'm set up a time lapse and I will come back in a few minutes and I will show you exactly what needs to be done. <music> try to do this holding the camera with one hand and reaching down in there with the magnet with the other the magnet wants to try to stick to everything but what you want it to but you wouldn't reach down in there because you really have a hard time getting that washer off so you take the magnet and stick down in there on this side of the carburetor you can actually get two fingers down in there and hold on to the nuts and not drop them and I've got them right there in a nice safe place in this trough right here on top of the radiator where they can't get lost. So now we're gonna come around and try to work on this side. See if I can get you a shot where they're located. They are, you can't see them. Do my best. Let's try another camera angle here. If we can see them, there they are right down there on the bottom that one right there on the left does not come all the way up and you have to actually pick the carburetor up off of the base to get that nut out it is captured by the base of the carburetor and the stud that one there will come out fairly easily so we're going to get to work and we'll try to get you a camera angle where you can actually see All right, so I wanted to show you how to get the throttle cable off. Throttle cable comes across a bell crank right here. So what you have to do, my hand's probably gonna be in the way. I'll do my best. But you bring it around and you're gonna work that cable out of that bell crank. And you have to bring it around and get it lined up. There's a groove that you have to get it lined up with. You can slide it out. You see that barrel goes in that hole. And there's a groove. And then your throttle cable is free. Alright, so now we need to get back here and take that last nut out. Alright, so we've got to get to this last nut, which is like I said, right here. This is the hardest one to get loose. Because it's somewhat captured with all the stuff that's in there. You just have to take your time. Come on. And you have to just keep going, get it going until you get get it get the nut out of influence of the uh, lock washer. These, since I have had this apart, it's uh, the threads are pretty clean. Go ahead, I can, I can take and turn it with one finger. This may not be so easy to do if it hadn't been off in a long time. Ooh, it actually did come out without having to lift the carburetor up. I'm actually kind of surprised at that. I think last time I thought I had to lift the carburetor up, but it must not have. It must have just had some trash on it. On your lock washer. And there you go. You do need your magnet for your lock washers. For 100 for sure. And we're going to have to bump it because it's stuck. There it goes. Came right up, no problemo. All right, what's holding it? Ah, one last vacuum line. There it is, carburetor's off. 
All right, last thing. Cover your intake so that you don't have to worry about anything getting shoved down in it. All right, so we have moved this project indoors, and I'm going to do my best to try to get you to where you can keep you an angle as to where you can see. Um, I do have a fan going in the back, seeing as how it is 101 or 102. Um, outside in the open air in the shade, it's not too bad, but inside the shop, it's a brutal. So, anyway, I hopefully have a good angle that you'll be able to see what exactly what I'm doing. It's hard to show on this carburetor, but this Subaru carburetor is pretty simple. Um, one of the first things we're going to do is you've got this bracket right here which is for the, uh, the choke pull off device right here it gets a vacuum it pulls against the choke lever and cracks it just a little bit uh, so that the car will run then you have an electric choke which heats up and completes the rest of the choke opening and uh, allows it to run at idle and without enriching the circuit all right so the first thing we're going to take off is we're going to take off this bracket um I've got to try to remember exactly what I did before when I took it apart. I don't think I took the control arms loose from the choke. I think I just took it and moved it out of the way. So it's kind of going to be a learning experience as we go for me to remember what I did. I guess I could go back and look at my video and see if I could tell. But, but we're going to go ahead and get these screws out. And you have, and they're going to be. I think we're going to end up with some different length screws that we'll just need to kind of pay attention to. I think I can just take the screws out of this, and it's just going to move out of my way, though. Pretty sure. All right. Just lay your screws to the side. Yep, it moves over enough. I think I can get that top off. All right. Now another thing you're going to need to pay attention to is this pivot right here. This is your hooks directly. Down here on the bottom, it goes to your throttle linkage and it operates the accelerator pump right here. Did you see this spring right here? You have to get that put back into place. So, let's go ahead and take that out. If it'll come out, I may have to get a bigger screwdriver. I will. And the only screwdriver I have is that mamma jamma right there nice and long so we'll just stick it in there out of frame but it fits nicely and boom and we'll take that screw out hang on to it and what you have to keep in mind too is it is a Bring up here where you can see, you can see that it is a shouldered screw. All right, and it has a washer behind it as well. So we don't want to lose that. Let's try not to let it go zinging across the shop. Let's see how I pull it out of the accelerator pump and then we can gently try to take and work it off of that spring. It's got some pressure on it, so may have to get something and pry that off. And going back together, it's a trick, but ring, quing, and it flies off. And you take it off of your throttle arm. Take all your pieces. You got a lock washer and a flat washer there. Like I said, keep up with all your pieces. Going back together is the fun part. Coming apart, it's not too bad. It's just getting it back together. All right, down here, we have one, another uh, of your choke arm. And this is part of what, right here, when your choke sets, this is what brings the idle up just a little bit as well. It kicks the idle speed up, but Take your fingers and you may have to take a screwdriver or something to stick down there and, and carefully. Some people call these split pins. Uh, they're, I know them as cotter pins. We'll go ahead and 
straighten it out so that you can get it out. I might have enough that I can get some pliers on it and pull it out. Leatherman. Don't leave home without it. All right. Now a little twist and pull and boom, there it goes. It comes right out. I have some more of these. I'm going to hang on to this one. But I think I can get it straight enough to reuse one more time. But I have a box of them. Um, I bought from Harbor Freight. So that I always have some around. Anyway, take that arm and you slide it out because this whole top will need to come up in a few minutes. And if you don't take that arm loose, you can't get the uh, top up off of the carburetor, the body. Um, we've got your throttle uh, accelerator pump boot. Keeps dust, dirt from getting down inside the carburetor. And when we lift it off, we're gonna try to leave that accelerator pump in the body of the carburetor and lift the top off of it. So let's go around and get these screws out. And like I said, different length screws for different positions. You just kind of pay attention as you take it apart. A little leatherman in there and there we go, we got it out. And let's see, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Oh, there it comes. Starting top starting to come off already. You may just leave that screw in there and lift it off with it on there. There's a spring in here that pushes between the body. There's a groove that the boot sits in. We need to try to get off and carefully, not tear the boot. Come on. There it goes. See how I've got that where it'll come off? All right, well, what am I forgetting? It should be lifting off here. Oh, ding-a-ling. Throttle return spring. Take the pliers, roll it out, and just leave it attached to the other side. Let's see if that was all it was. Oh, I've got another spring right here. Take your pliers down in there and just gently take the spring loose. And let's see if she comes off. And we're still attached here. We'll just be careful and flip it upside down. You don't want to turn this upside down if you can help it. And I do see a little bit of rust debris down inside the carburetor. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna tip it up so you can see. Got a little gasoline down in there. I'm gonna get a rag and soak it out and I'm gonna get my air nozzle and then we're gonna start blowing it out. Cause there's not much inside this wrong inside this carburetor. It just has a little bit of debris that I believe has been stirred up and is stopping up a jet. Yep. Now that I got the fluid out of there, you get this gasoline soaked rag out of my shop. I'm laid out here in the sunshine, it'll evaporate all pretty quick. Now that I have the most of the gasoline out, you can see that there's a little bit of trash down inside there. So I grab my air nozzle and my air line and we will try to get some of that trash out of there. I'm gonna need another shop rag to lay over it so that I don't blow trash in my eyes.
Oh, sorry while I kick you over. Alright, we're going to lift this out. It's your accelerator pump. Lay it to the side. There's a spring. And what you need to understand and be very not very cognizant of is down inside that bore you can see it down there at the bottom there's a check valve so I'm gonna put a hot pause on here for just a moment until that compressor kicks off so it took a minute for the compressor to shut off let me move a couple of things out of the way lay a shop rag down catch this so that it doesn't roll away or bounce and fall off and get lost because you do not want to lose this check ball and there's a slide right there a check slide we're going to turn it upside down and let both of them fall right there on the shop rag move it where you can see it you see that right there The, without that check ball, the accelerator pump will not work. So, make sure our needle is clean. I'm going to lay it and this check ball over to the side over here. That is, I got a ring that is off a throttle body from a TBI, but I can lay it there. I don't have to worry about it rolling away. So, one of the other things, let's get you set back up here. All right, one of the things I did off camera while the compressor was building up, I went ahead and I pulled these plugs out right here. One here and one here. This is access to your jets to where they actually squirt into the carburetor. And I undid these jets and you can see this tube right here. And you want to make sure that it's open down through there. I don't know if this is going to work. But you can shine a light and look down inside that jet. You can shine. It's hard to see. Maybe this way will work better. Yeah, you can actually see that that jet is open. You can see light all the way through that little bitty tiny hole in the top. That one is clear. Pay attention to where these go. They're made differently. And I don't know that they'll thread in. Let's see. Yes, they will. You can get them backwards and your carburetor will not run right. So, make sure you pay attention to where you take them out of so that you put them back in the same place. But I did check both of those jet tubes and the holes are open. So, let me move some of this stuff off my shop rag because I'm going to need it. When I start blowing it up, be careful with your tiny little parts because if you lose them, you're dead in the water. So, I did not think when I went to the parts store, I was not brilliant enough to go, hey, let me get a can of carburetor cleaner while I'm here. Nope. Went off and forgot it. So, you take your, I've got some brake clean and that will work fine. Through the accelerator pump hole. Whoa, watch your eyes. Make sure that jet hole's clear. And you can see, you can see I'm spraying down in this hole and it's coming out that hole. Let's go down inside this one. You can see it's coming out here. You spray in here. And you, I don't know. Let me try to make sure you get an angle so that you can see. When I spray down in here, it's coming out here. When I spray here, it should come out here. My hand out of the way. You can see it. grab a flathead screwdriver I'm gonna take there's a check valve down here in the bottom 
take it out and make sure it, you can blow through it. Alright, let's see if we can get a screwdriver to act right down in here. You have to push a little pin down. And there it goes. Take that out. And there's a little crud around it. flashlight look down in there give her a shot and get any of the debris that's in there out all right let me find something to dump my bowl out into just dump it into the shop rag and get in and take the shop rag out While it's tipped up, wash it out. That way any debris in there will come on out. All right. Now, let's get a little compressed air again. Hopefully we can do it without the compressor coming on. But I doubt it. Okay, now you can see how small all these little orifices are, oh this little hole, so it doesn't take but just a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of trash and with as much rust as this car had in its fuel system, it takes you a bit to get it all worked out. So now it's time to work on putting this carburetor back together this is the fun part remember all your little pieces and where they go Just drop that down in there and get it started drop that down in there and get it started our little plugs Let's go ahead and get them started don't have to gorilla up on these you just need to tighten them down snug them in place that started back down in there That one actually has a washer on it, a ceiling washer. All right, now, something else I want to show you. We're about to drop this little bitty, little bitty tiny check ball down inside the accelerator pump. Let's go ahead and drop it down in there. You want to make sure it goes down. There it goes. There's a hole for it to fall into in the bottom of that bore. But when you drop your spring down in there, what you need to pay attention to 
See how the spring's designed? This end, there's nothing here, okay? It's designed to fit the bottom of your accelerator pump. This end has a special hook on it. It is designed to hold that check ball in place. You want to make sure that this spring goes back down in there the proper way. Your accelerator pump. You might want to take and put some kind of a, a light lube on it. You don't need it to get carried away. Just a very light film of grease. Just a little bit. It'll get washed washed out with the, uh, with the gasoline. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking about just a whisper of grease. Just enough to where it's not dry when you're trying to put it back down in there. You can't see grease glopped up. All you see is a little sheen on there. Now all that is, like I said, it's just so that you're not trying to force it back down in the bore dry. And it should sit just like that. Okay. And don't do not forget get a little handy dandy needle. It goes down right there in that bore. This is the fun part. This is where you get to put the top back on. Make sure everything's lining up. You line up your accelerator pump and make sure your float's going back down there. Take your fingers and carefully line your boot back up on your accelerator pump. Drop it back into place. And start getting your screws. That one we never took out of the body, it never came out. It stayed with it. So we'll just go ahead and gently get it started back into place. Don't tighten all your screws until you have them all started. Go ahead and get a few threads going. Alright, now that I have all the screws back in the top, And go ahead and start tightening them down and you don't want to get carried away you just need they need to be tight not stripped out Okay, now let's go ahead and bring this arm up. One of the ones we pulled off, like I said, is our choke arm for uh, kicking the accelerator up just a little bit. And get it started. You may have to reach down in there with a screwdriver or something to bend it over. Some of this stuff can be kind of tedious. Just take your time, you'll be fine. There we go. Yeah, my... Let's see if we can ring, ring it this time. Nope, try again. Nope, try again. Let's see if I can do it with my Leatherman. My extra fingers, I like to call them sometimes. Nope, try again.
and there it went we got it that time just have to keep keep at it Just reach your screwdriver in there until you get it bent like you want. You just want it bent so it's not going to hang up on anything. There we go. And there we go. I do want to say this while I'm thinking about it, while it's fresh on my brain. That what I'm doing here, guys, I would not call this a carburetor overhaul. Um, this carburetor is basically in good enough condition that, uh, that we were going to call this a uh, refresh and a cleaning and just to make sure everything in it's working properly. If your accelerator pump's working properly, most times these carburetors, <coughs> most, uh, <coughs> if these carburetors are working properly, most times all that you need is an accelerator pump and they'll work with a good cleaning. No worse than this one was anyway. So, all right, moving on. All right, I've been playing around with this before I actually did it. And this is actually the hardest part of this whole operation. And that is getting the accelerator pump arm back on. There are some tiny little parts and they're very difficult to work with. So, first thing we're gonna start with is this spring. Um, as far as where the zipper is on this job, I don't know, but you go ahead and what I have kind of surmised is go ahead and get the spring in place. Take your throttle arm and you have to go over this linkage right here. And then you take, just kind of let it lay to the side and bring this spring up and hold on to it. You got to have some tough fingers and go ahead and get it started over it like that. It also lines up with your accelerator pump. This pin be in alignment with the accelerator pump. Now, getting this screw line back up. Go ahead and stick it in. And begin working it that way. Now, there's a flat washer right here and a lock washer they go on the back side of that bolt back it up just a little bit and see if we can get it started on there without too much profanity okay it's going but it's not quite where i want it all right you can see i've got the flat washer on the bolt Next, we want to get the lock washer. And we'll see if I can sneak down in there with a pair of needle nose pliers, my Leatherman, and drop it where I want it, hopefully. Okay, it is actually on there. Get it in place. Now, I'll take the screwdriver and try to run it in. Keep everything lined up. And get it started just like that. You got to hold your mouth just right to get that to go back in there. And you want to make sure that the, the, the arm goes up over the shoulder part of the bolt. Otherwise, your arm is locked. There we go. I got it. Just lift up and pull it up on the shoulder once the screw started. And then you can tighten your bolt up. And we've got another spring that I forgot to lock and put in place. Now maybe a little more difficult since I've, maybe not. I should have done this while I still while I had more room in there to work. But I didn't. So now I have to finagle and try to get it where I want it. That spring flop back around. There 
is. I know you probably can't see where I'm trying to work, but it's down here. It's that one that goes to the other choke arm. All right. There it is. I think I got her. And we missed. Thought it would line up, but it wasn't. This turned out to be a bigger pain in the rump than the, getting the accelerator on the pump bar back on. But I did it to myself. So, we figured it out. I have to get some different needle pliers over here to do what I want to do. Oh, come on. Fuck me. There it is, finally. That little spring right in there. Bring in close. See that spring up in there? Right there by my thumb. Try not to forget that. Put that on while these arms are all still out of the way. So. I believe that's it. I don't have any extra parts laying around, so I must have it put it back together correctly. Now, get to put it back on the car. All right, so we are back to the car. Carburetor's back together off the bench. Now, we've talked about this before, where water comes up underneath this carburetor right here in one port, and it needs just a little dressing of silicone. I've got an old tube. Uh, I think I've got some, still got some soft silicone in it. It's fixing to go to the garbage, so we'll poke a hole in it and see if we can get some silicone out of it because it don't need much. And look at there. That's why you don't ever throw your tubes away until they're completely gone. That's probably more than I need. Definitely more than you need. Yep. And get it everywhere, dummy. Come on. All right, let me get the excess off my fingers and smear that other around real good. It's a nice thin smear just to keep the water from leaking. See if we can get this carburetor to sit back down on there. Just like that. Ta da! Alright, now, this is where your magnet comes in handy. Come on around. If you can see that or not, you might be able to. You take your magnet and try to hook your. Oh, I see. It can be tricky. You got it. it can be tricky, but it's better than your finger trying to do it with your fingers. Whoop. You think? The carburetor needs to go down on there just a little bit more. There we go. And that one's going to be a pain in the butt. Yeah. 
getting these nuts started. That's another story altogether. But you take your time, it can happen. The magnet keeps you from dropping them as easily. This one I think I can actually get my fingers on. You still want to be careful to try not to drop it. Come on. There it went. Okay, now it's a matter of putting a wrench to them and tighten them all up. All right, so we've got all our hoses hooked back up and we've got to put the breather back on and we've got some hoses that have to be connected as we go on this breather. We left some of the hoses connected to the breather and we left some of the hoses connected to the car. As I said earlier, whatever comes loose the easiest, that's what you deal with, that's what you take loose. So, eyeball where they go you got this one goes here and let's see what do we got underneath that one goes there and the others will we'll do as we go and this can be a little tedious but not too bad plug them there the most tedious part about it is thinking you're about to break everything it's keeping it from going down. There we go. Slide that on. I'm going to get this one put in place. Yep. Yep. Slide that on. Yeah, I've only had them off about 52 times. And there should be another rubber hose. There's one there. That there it is right there. This is the age of the vacuum tube. This one goes... Where does this one go? There's probably a vacuum T somewhere here. Do you think it's on the manifold somewhere? Yep. This one got pulled around where it doesn't belong. It goes down. Yep. Yep. Straight down here. See? Way down in the Way down there. Just got whirled around where it doesn't belong. And this slides up on there. We need to tighten that clamp eventually. But there it is. It's falling back on. Okay. All that Turn the lid on. The nuts are back there. Yep. Subaru. Subaru used to have a theme song years ago at the dealership in Mobile, Alabama. And it said, Subaru, we're going places in the south. Subaru. I don't think it was an officially sanctioned Subaru. It was a local dealer. Is that all you remember from it? That's all I remember. That was that was their catch line. We're going places in the south. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, keys in it. Let me hold camera. Let you go crank it. Helps to have the. Uh, battery How, it helps to have the battery hooked up. You're right. Let's see if we let the smoke out. Give it a little twist. There you go. Sure, ain't left no tools down in there. Only thing I had was a magnet, and a ten millimeter. 
and my Leatherman, which is in my pocket. We don't have any cool. Yep, we need to put those in it. Duh. I already did the other one. Just need to tighten them in. Enough. That's things going. stronger than if you think. I know how it feels. I know how to feel it. I have one. Yeah, you do have one. We don't have any cooling in it. Remember that. But uh, let's just see if she's going to crank up and run. We'll run it. We did that before, but only do a point. Let's get this fire starter out of there. Get the pump going. Yeah, I'm just giving it Letting the electric pump prime. Stand to the side. All right, we'll give it a shot. You need to tighten that alternator belt a little bit. It's not perfect, but yeah, it's still a little cold. It's true. Might be better once it's warm. I kicked it off the choke after just a couple seconds. All right. Well, let's sure. get some coolant back in it. All right. Well, we're motoring, and she's running like a Swiss watch at the moment. Uh, hope, oh, I spoke too soon. See, that's what I get for saying runs like a Swiss watch. Acts like it's trying to run out of gas. We'll see. So, it started bucking and snorting. My son's about 25 miles from the house and uh, was gonna brag on how good it was running and well, I guess it has some more cer trash circulating through the carburetor. Again, I said that that is not a proper carburetor rebuild. It is just going through and cleaning the trash out. I should have taken the solenoid off and blown through it. Come over here and let's show them real quick. This is your idle solenoid and for the primary circuit right here. Um, what we did is we cut it because it's all part of a harness and I went ahead and pulled it out and shot a little carburetor spray up in it. Shot a little carburetor spray in it and then we went in with some compressed air and you could actually see it shooting out inside the Venturi. And as soon as we did that, it started idling again. So. The only thing I can figure is we still maybe had a little piece of trash that's floating around. Um, you said, my son, who's behind the camera, said that he's done some reading on these carburetors and they are very, very sensitive to trash. Um, we have repeatedly gone through this system to clean the fuel, fuel system out and make sure that there's no rust left. So, um, hopefully this will fix it. He's going to put it all back together in a little while and try to drive it. He'll let me know. Yeah. It's the next day. All right, so we took it back apart again. Pulled the jets out of it, out of the bottom of the bowl. And it works. -ish. I'm about to try it. We're going to try it again. We washed and cleaned. Oh, and we added another filter up here. This filter is actually a water separator. This is not actually a filter and the gas can backflow around through this line. And it had some crud in it and we cleaned it out and we flushed everything and please God, let that be it. So we're fixing to go for a ride. Well, so far she's running good. She's not bucking. Oh. Ice cream! I've watched that van going down the road. It's got like, it's got camera. Like the front wheels are like this. Dude. Ice cream man! Look, the front wheels on that van are like this. It goes down the road. <laughs> he don't go for I saw a grown ass man stop that truck the other day. Yeah, you see the camera on that, Ice front, cream. On that passenger side? <laughs> Ice cream man! So, we've done a bunch of crap off camera. Blocked off the EGR plate, long story short. 
yeah long story short we blocked off egr we got in touch with grunt and from what it was doing he suggested that we eliminate the egr by putting in a piece of uh, steel so we put in uh, cut up a piece of license plate and we are fixing to go for a test drive and i will say the last time i drove this car it was bucking and it's not bucking right now so all right so fingers crossed hopefully and uh, EGRs are available for this stupid thing too, like 26 bucks. So it has so much more power right now than it has at any point. Are you serious? I'm serious. Okay, well, it's that, driving great. All right, well, no in a few minutes. Sneak up there. Just nice and easy. I just let out a clutch at first. That's all. I know. brought my gimbal it won't be so bouncy but, but this will give you kind of an idea of how rough it is yeah the car does ride pretty stiff yeah, it rides like oh man really stiff center up on that for sure tells me we finally got it grumps was right egr baby something to be said for experience and knowledge thanks grumps <laughs> oh we're gonna take it out on the road we're fixing to go pick up a little lunch to celebrate we'll be back okay the carburetor's been back apart did Pulled find it. some trash did find some trash and we did drill the jet and uh, throttle response does seem to be better I don't know but we're rolling we don't know anything Okay, well, it did all right for that 12 minutes of road test. He's got to drive it some more. Maybe. No, he's got to drive it some more to know for sure. But so far, it's doing okay. What all did we do? Let's see, we blocked the EGR. We've cleaned the carburetor. Carburetor's been off and on. Five or six times. Five or six times with just little bitty micro I mean small pieces of trash and I think we finally got it. Oh, yeah, we also drilled out the Jet the yeah We drilled out the, the we drilled, main jet. drilled out the main jet for the primary side and then we put another inline filter before the carburetor Yep, if you can't tell I'm tired So is he and dejected So why don't you help us out and go watch another video coming on the screen right now. Mm -hmm.